but let's start with off with talking about functional assessment because that's kind of one of the keys to our entire uh, system here. Now, oddly, functional assessment, the, the, when people write books about behavior mod, they have a hard time figuring out where to put this. Uh, the primary reason is because this is really what you do first. <laughs> but in order to know what to do first, you have to know about the different components involved. The basic idea, though, is that we're going to be uh, uh, looking for the causes of behavior. Right? Um, or with assessment anyway, we're going to be looking at the likely causes of it. There's something called functional analysis, which we'll get into in a little bit, which definitely demonstrates the actual causes of behavior. It's an actual experiment. Okay, uh, so functional assessment, we're looking for those causes or the likely causes. They can be several, several cases, there are several situations here, uh, but primarily we're looking for the things that lead to behavior. In other words, the discriminative stimuli. Um, if the behavior is under stimulus control, uh, then we would uh, be able to identify that hopefully using functional assessment uh, or. Hopefully hopefully be able to identify it using functional assessment. And then we also look for the reinforcers and things like that. Um, so in that last chapter, of course, it talks about all those different tools that we're going to use, the interviews and things like that. So we're going to use everything we have available, both direct assessment, indirect assessment, that we can to perform this, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that we can to perform this functional assessment. But that said, again, you know, I don't, I don't know. This is tough because a lot of people when they do FA, functional assessment, they, they like to do a bunch of indirect measures. And there's a certain value to that because the idea with indirect measures is that I'm going to interview all those people that uh, are familiar with the client or the person who's having the problem behavior and hopefully extract some useful information from them about what may be leading to behavior, what be, may be maintaining it, and those types of things. And obviously you're not going to ask it in those types of, uh, with those types of questions, but uh, ultimately, um, that's what you're trying to get at. You, you don't want to walk in there and say, oh, what's, what's the discriminative stimuli for the behavior? No, we don't actually say that. Um, but um, we say, we ask questions like, what, you know, what's going on in this child? You know, let's say it's a kid in the school. So we say, what's going on at school when he misbehaves or she misbehaves? And whatever misbehaving means, right? Um, and that's kind of getting at the SDs, right? And they say, well, what happens when they misbehave? What do you do? And, and you, you can ask the teacher and uh, you can talk to parents. And there's a, there's, it, it's valuable. But the problem is, is that you don't know if those people are telling the truth. You don't know how accurately they're doing their observations. So they may just be giving you a line, right? And they may be just trying to answer your question without being honest about it. Right? Um, and not because they're trying to ruin your program, but because they just don't know. So from my perspective, we're going to focus most heavily on direct observation, and that is going to be what is really useful about functional assessment, um, is that we're going to get in there and actually observe the behavior. Okay. So let's look at the procedures. First off, describe the darn thing. All right. So describe the behavior in question and provide an operational definition for it. If you do not have an operational definition, game over, walk away. Right, because you will not be successful. It's just a guarantee about that. Um, so we're going to describe that behavior in crazy detail like you guys have done um, for the various projects in this course. And, and again, the idea here is not just the not just the operational definition, which is kind of what I said, but also get that functional definition. What value is this behavior performing? Um, and we're going to tease apart that functional definition more, and that's the idea with functional assessment, right? So again, let's just look at the title of functional assessment as I digress a bit here and go in, into that and say that the reason it's called functional is not because it works, but we're saying functional, what is the function of the behavior? So that's what we're really trying to do with a functional assessment, right? So we're going to describe that behavior and we're going to define ecological events, those things, that, the context in which it's happening. Um, we're going to define antecedent events, right, for the behavior occurring and not occurring, right? So what is actually going on and under what scenarios, right? Um, and that's what we're at so far. Identify the consequences for inappropriate behavior. What's going on, right? So what what does the person get out of misbehaving? Let's say it is a kid in the class. Maybe they're, you know, I don't know, throwing a pencil or something. But they only throw a pencil when they're asked to do something. And maybe the teacher hasn't put A and B together. And the idea there would be that obviously they're trying to escape something, right? So depending on the consequence, maybe they get taken out of the room. Maybe they get removed from the task or told to sit in the corner. Well, no matter what it is, no matter what those of all those consequences, they all led to the same thing, which is that they got out of the task that they were, be that they were um, being asked to do. Right. Another important thing that we want to do is ask what the person can do instead. 
So if you're working with a kid in a class, you'd say, well, what would you like the child to do? You talk to the teacher and say, what would you like them to be? The, you know, this is the problem behavior. What would you like them to do? And again, the first thing that people are going to do is they're going to say, well, I want them to be a good child. They should be a good child. You know, and they get all fired up about that. And the problem there is that they need to define what that means so they can know when the kid's being good. As we've talked about in the past, sometimes just coming up with a definition and then starting to observe it, you realize, well, guess what? There's really not a problem here. Um, it seemed like a problem for whatever reason, but it, it, oftentimes it isn't a problem. What should you avoid, right? You know, what, what sort of behaviors do they not want? Do you not want them to do? What sort of procedures would you not want them to do? Um, do can you avoid? Do you have to avoid punishment? Do you have to avoid food reinforcers? Um, are there contexts that automatically cause the behavior to happen? Are there um, are there people that you put? You know, let's say the kids in a classroom and they sit next to somebody. Do they always argue with that person? You know, that's one of those things that we can worry about. Um, so maybe they should just avoid that particular person. And what's the history? Let's look at the big picture here. Right? Uh, how long has this been going on? Is it new? Has it been a problem through multiple grades? Has it been a problem for multiple years? Has it been a problem with multiple teachers, multiple classrooms, multiple, you know, whatevers, right? So wh what, what leads to this kid's problems, right? Are there medical issues? That's an important thing to ask as well. You know, if, in fact, in school psych, we talk about something called a manifestation determination. And that's where you make a determination that the problem behavior is a manifestation of a medical issue. If so, then you've got special procedures that you need to follow. Right? Um, so that can be part of your functional assessment as well, to, start to see if you can start getting at those medical issues. Okay. All right, now, once you've done all of that sort of stuff, and again, this is oftentimes not direct at this point, uh, this is indirect stuff, so now is when we get in and start the observations. And we're going to start doing a baseline and we're going to get crazy accurate with our baseline and we're going to look for behaviors that are competing with each other right um, you want a behavior to you want the kid to be on task in the classroom uh, well that's competing with off task behavior okay? uh, we often talk about competing contingencies and that's really what we're getting at here is that a competing contingency is something where you've got uh, two different contingencies that are working against you or are working against the, the kid. One is selecting for inappropriate behavior. One is selecting for appropriate behavior. So, for example, um, if you've got a con competing contingency in the classroom, escape, may, uh, escape of a task may be a more powerful contingency than is completion of the task. They're competing. They're both functioning at the same time. They're both running, uh, but one of them is more powerful than the other, so maybe we have to change that. Uh, sometimes you have a punisher and a reinforcer that are competing, um, and like I've always said, punishers are going to lose. Gen generally speaking, punishers are going to lose um, uh, over reinforcement any day of the week. All right. Uh, an example there would be, let's say you're punishing the kid for inappropriate behavior, but the kid is still behaving inappropriately, still getting out of those tasks. The reinforcer is winning. They're st still escaping those tasks. And even though you're punishing, that's not really going to solve the problem. Not necessarily, anyway. Then we're going to provide a summary after we've done all those observations. Uh, we're going to start to provide summaries of here's what we think is going on. And that's going to lead us to developing an intervention. So, again, the summaries cover all of those things. The anesthesia.